Well, moving into our last story of the day, we got Bud Light's Nightmare from Hell, and we got the, the I guess, another gladiator here, Mr. Wonderful himself, Kevin O'Leary, talking about it. We're not going to watch the whole thing here, uh, but I do want to highlight some aspects of what he's talking about from Businessman the Businessman. I am nowhere near of equal weight to Kevin O'Leary. I'm not trying to be, but I know kind of the basics about business and, and the basics about accounting and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not giving myself a pat on the back. I haven't been an accountant for a lot of years. A lot of the knowledge from counting 101 has faded from me, but I could still at least give my commentary on terms of what he's talking about and what Bud Light did and the asinine things and decisions that they made in terms of what they did with pushing a certain agenda. Let's go ahead and roll it. Well, Bud Light um, has become the poster boy for brand mismanagement from multiple perspectives. So let, let me lay it out for you because th these th the discussions that have arisen and the narrative that's arisen around Bud Light is probably a good lesson for every CEO in every sector of the economy. Number one, it highlights the power of social media. This, this issue went viral in 48 hours. Yeah. And most often when an issue goes viral like that, it burns out in another 48 hours. But that's not what happened here. The story and narrative changed to sales. And so people that did not like the message, regardless of where you stand on these social issues or gender narrative or whatever, they took it out by basically boycotting the product mm. immediately. Yeah. And switching preference to other brands that did not make them get involved in this issue. And other viral videos go on on social media, like Kid Rock shooting Bud Light cans and people dumping Bud Light and all. And so that just adds to it, right? Well, it's because that narrative became very powerful and people piled on. Now, if you're trying to manage that and trying to learn something from it, and I certainly talked to all my CEOs about this because here we are talking about it. Something that a lot of people don't talk about as well is how easy it is for the consumer to just go buy another brand of beer. There's a lot of different types of beer out there. There's craft beer, there's imported beer. I mean, there's a lot of beer for Americans to drink and Bud Light's just not that good. I don't drink Bud Light. I drink predominantly stone from San Diego, Stone, if you haven't had it, try it. Stone IPA, they got double IPA. Sometimes they got a triple IPA, Rune 10. Uh, they got Rune Nation, that double IPA, that's phenomenal. If you don't like IPAs, I get it. It's kind of an acquired taste. But well, it's easy for people to just go buy more beer. The reason why we're not seeing so much of a transition away from like Disney Plus, even though they're not doing well, or other so sort of media is because conservatives don't have a grasp on the media yet. That's why you have literally Fox News, but then you have CNN, MSNBC, ABC, uh, CBS, all these other left-wing-ish media outlets around it. There's nowhere really for Republicans to go other than the kind of podcast like mine or Dan Bogino or others. So it's it's an easier barrier, barrier to entry, if you want to call it that. It's not a barrier to entry to the consumer, but they're allowed, they're able to sit there and access other beer more quickly than they would be to, hey, you know what? I want to go to another streaming service. Well, they're just not out there. So I think, I think a lot of power was in the hands of the consumer in terms of boycotting this because there's other great beer out there for them to choose. In its second month. Yeah. This is a nightmare from hell for the brand. Because and and really the sales is. don't, they haven't, some brands in Anheuser-Busch have, have had declines get lesser, but Bud Light's still down big. This is worse than New Coke, Old Coke, and it's becoming oh, its yeah. own story for the ages. I'll be teaching this one at Harvard. There's no question about it. Because you have to ask yourself, in crisis management, what do you do? Because if you go to the other side and try and balance the gender narrative, you're going to get a whole new onslaught of people yeah. that don't like Not just an onslaught of whole new people. And Bud Light tried this, by the way. What, what Kevin O'Leary's talking about, they've already tried this, of instituting that commercial with the horse running around, trying to be all patriotic. People are going to take that as you're patronizing them. You've already sat there and pushed a certain agenda. You've already claimed a certain territory of which you've never claimed before. And and how one side felt was that you're you're now shifting perspective before you're pro-America. And what a lot of people tend to believe is the other side of the aisle doesn't like the American flag. That's the Democrat Party, the progressive left. Predominantly don't like the American flag. They don't like what this country stands for. They think this country is racist. So by you switching over to what conservatives Republicans felt like and some independents as well to the other side of the aisle. And then you're patronizing them with this pro America, even though you're like, well, you just sat there and moved to the other side of the aisle. It's not a big fan of the American flag and what America stands for. So they're going to feel lied to and cheaped out at the end of the day. And they're not going to go back. If anything, they're going to boycott you more, which is what's happening. That And there have been bars that have banned all Anheuser-Busch products because Bud Light tried to distance itself from Dylan Mulvaney and what happened.
So the lesson learned and what everybody should think about in every consumer product category, when you take polarized positions on any narrative, there you, go. you are going to alienate 50% of your consumer 100% of the time. So if you're willing to do something very controversial because you think it's going to go viral in a positive way, you need to analyze the downside in a negative way as well. In consumer goods and services, Republicans drink beer, Democrats drink beer, some believe in the gender neutrality, some don't, but they all consume your product. So Correct. if you know that with certainty and you have billions of dollars of capitalization at stake, why would you go down that road in the first place? Exactly. And this is what we've been talking about here on the Bald Brad Show. Why is Disney pushing a certain agenda? Because they're alienating a certain base or a certain uh, customer set of which they have. There's no reason to push it, but they want to push it. Or if you're going to push it, just have it happen naturally, not in every single film. You know, a lot of cons one thing we have to get a get kind of a grasp here is a lot of the Democrats and, and the left think that conservatives, Republicans are just absolutely against gays and and the LGBTQ community. That is not the case. There's a lot of people that are part of the LGBTQ community that are Republicans and conservatives. Where things started going south was shoving it down people's throats in every film, every newspaper, every ad, like all the time where it's like, just let it happen naturally. That's fine. We'll let it happen naturally. It's been a thing for quite some time, for decades, by the way. But now that it's like every time you're even changing scripts to where that's not how people talk, it's being shoved in our throat. And then kind of what kind of pushed conservatives, Republicans over the edge was going after the children. That's really what did it. If, if we had to sit there and, and claim a stake to like, hey, let's draw a line in the stand. This is where things went south. This is where Republicans and conservatives, and by the way, some Democrats and independents as well, have had enough, specifically in the trans community, isn't the fact that people want to be trans. No, we're, again, conservative Republicans, look, liberal on the idea of like, hey, go, go do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave us alone. The problem is you're not leaving us alone. You're targeting our kids in the classroom, on Disney+, Plus, on the media, on, on, on TV, whatever it may be. You're going after them constantly. Whereas if you just left the kids alone, I think conservatives Republicans would roll, roll their eyes just that I do. Like, okay, here's another thing. I just want to watch a movie. I don't want something crammed down my throat. I'm here just for entertainment. Why can't I just be entertained? Why are you throwing ideology at me constantly? Like, that's all we want. But what Kevin O'Leary doesn't understand is these people have an agenda. In the same way, there's activist teachers in the classroom. Activist teachers are activists before they are teachers, meaning they're going to push their agenda before they're actually going to be teachers. I'm a teacher. I'm not an activist. I just want to teach math. I just want your kid, regardless of LGBTQ community. I love them all. I have, I have no, I have, I'm, I try to my best to be respectful to all students, regardless of who they are, race, ethnicity, all those things. I just want them to do well and be successful in life. That's all I genuinely care about. I don't care about if they're gay. I don't care about if they're lesbian. I don't care about if they're trans. I don't care about any of that. I just want them to be successful, good people with good morals and just be okay in life. That's all I care about. And that they do well in my classroom in terms of mathematics. That's what I really care about. I don't want to push an agenda on them. I don't even care if they're Democrats or, 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 or leftists or whatever it is. I can care less. But there are activists out there that want to indoctrinate your children. And they will do everything they can. They'll take down a company. You're seeing that with Disney. These executives, the, 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 the stuff's been leaked in terms of their meetings on what they've said. They wanted like 50% of their movies and stuff like that to have like an LGBTQ uh, lead by like a certain date and time. So they have an agenda and that's why Disney plus is tanking you guys. There's other variables that go into it, but it's one of many variables as to why they're tanking. There's a lot of reasons why the parks for Disney is what's uplifting or, or holding them together at present time. That's why they bring uh, Bob back. They got rid of Chapek and Bob, uh, brought back Iger. So Kevin needs to understand is that there's people that are activists before whatever title comes after their name and they're willing to damage a company like you just saw with Bud Light to push that agenda. They don't care. It's not their money. They don't care. So that's my two cents on it. A little more than two cents right there, but I appreciate you listening nonetheless. And so if I were a board member there saying, show me who's responsible for this, because at the end of the day, when you go into new territory, consumer goods or services, like changing the flavor, as Coke found out decades ago, yeah, yeah. you need to own that as the CEO. If you're the man or yep. woman running this thing, you need to own it 100% because you can't blame it on a brand manager. You can't blame it on an advertising agency. You own it. And so I don't agree with that. Yes, you can. I'm not saying I'm not saying the CEO isn't liable either. He is. CEO and everybody else that sat there and pushed us forward need to be gone, need to be fired. I mean, you just cost you just cost the company billions of dollars in market. 
like billions of dollars. Like, dude, if it was in, in the millions, they should be fired. It's insane. You just sat there and crippled a company. I mean, Disney got rid of Bob Chapek, right? Got rid of the CEO. They got rid of uh, uh, Disney Plus execs as well. They're getting rid of people because they see what's going on. Yeah, the CEO and other people need to be fired for this. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you can't just sit there while it all rests on him. I, I don't agree with that because there's a lot of things that the CEO is is possibly not aware of. Is possibly not aware of. But, you know, Kevin O'Leary knows more than I do. Obviously, I agree with what he's saying. But at the same time, brand. Uh, yeah, come on. Brand needs to go as well. Now what's happened within corporate America, and I can assure you this has been a conversation in every boardroom, is who's running brand here? Who's deciding what networks we post on? Who is actually doing our social media? Who is actually calling the shots on the content? Because never before has the control of content after those frames leave and get posted, you don't have control of it anymore. The rest of the world decides what they want to do with it. And right. you've given plenty of examples how it, how it gets reposted and used to promote other people's narratives. Yeah. And so that brand got decimated. And at the end of the day, I'm sorry to say this, but the CEO, it's their fault. So what? Okay. Partially. Let's say I'm Bud Light. I'm on Shark Tank. I need money. And and you give, I give you, uh, Mr. Wonderful, give us 20%. I'll give you a 20% stake. Help us. What would you do? How would you fix this? Can you fix this? Well, as in, you know, I, I look at the decimation of the brand within a portfolio of, of brands. I mean, Bud Light used to be the go-to college beer, the Colorado pure water story, all that stuff. It got decimated here. It, it's no longer that beer. It, it's a beer with a, a sordid past. And so you have to think about what do you do with that? How do you creatively dig yourself out of that hole? This is such a phenomenal question, and I know I'm pausing on him. Again, we're not going to listen to the whole thing, but I really do want to hear what he has to say here because I don't know how you dig yourself out of this hole. You've already alienated 50% of the people, more than 50%, by the way, that drink your beer because Democrats are very patriotic as well, some of them, and they really love the beer. They love what it stands for. So you're looking at more than 50%, and there's not all, not all Democrats are on board with the LGBTQ trans community pushing stuff on your children and all this stuff that's really going on. I don't know how they dig themselves out of this hole because you can't just start pushing patriotic stuff now because we already know what you stand for. We already know your ideology. We already know all these things. So you can't, I don't know how they're going to get people back. I, I lower their prices, I guess, where it's so damn cheap. We're like, I might as well drink it. How do you reestablish that brand? And I'm not sure there's a clear path right now. Everybody involved in that brand is begging for the media to stop. And here you are with me talking about it again yeah. months later yeah and, and and it's not the only conversation i've had and so when i now talk about branding and managing brands and i teach young cohorts mostly graduating engineers which is where i focus this is the case this is the one that you're actually living today and so for me what what i would if, if i had to try and you know think about how would you manage out of this hole first step is stabilization First step is to stabilize the decline. Stop it from declining. That's not easy to do, though. No, it's not. But no. you can't think about gaining share yet. You just have to stop the narrative. And Cauterize the wound and then go from there. Correct. You, you know, th there's lots of metrics, and we do this in our own businesses. You can actually monitor by the hour on every platform what is occurring. Okay. And so you, you have to find – if I were doing this, I, I would have that analysis in front of me saying – where are the green shoots in this story? Where are we getting some support? Where are our users talking about their you know, their childhood growing up with Bud Light? You know, Bud Light as, as, a, as for a straws, favorable folks. choice on a caloric basis, on a nutritional basis, whatever can. it is. Where are the green shoots? Where do we spend there? Because Bud Light is a light beer. There is demand for light beers, mm -hmm. particularly amongst beer drinking men over 40. Yes, but there's a lot of, like you just said, there's a lot of light beers and there's a lot of other options for people to choose. And the fact that you just pissed them off, they're going to stick with the other beer. And by the way, you might have lost that customer forever, regardless of whether Bud Light switches things around. They might actually enjoy that other beer that they weren't willing to try beforehand because they were so stuck in their path and their ways with Bud Light that they weren't willing to transition to another beer because people in general don't like change. And so once you lose a customer, it's actually really hard to get them back. So somebody else probably just stayed over with that beer for maybe the remainder of their life, possibly. I mean... You got to go there and find those green shoots. And, you know, clearly when you're in crisis mode and, and 
the heads are going to roll. Oh, yeah. It's just too much capitalized loss. It's there you just go. Too much. That's what I said. Influencers are. He's basically saying, look, there's not much you can do. And without maybe saying it, and to go a little bit deeper, you're going to take some losses here for Bud Light. And I think kind of, I try to think about this myself because I love business. I have an accounting mind. I like going around places. I have that place stay in business. That's a terrible location. You know, the, the electricity, the rent on the building. You know, I run the math all the time whenever I go out uh, shopping or go to Disneyland or whatever it is. They're going to have to go. They need to go rogue for a little bit. Stop all the advertisement. You're going to save money there for a little bit. You need to just kind of just go dark for a while. You're going to have to cut. You're going to lose money. But like you said, you seem to stabilize things for a little bit. That that, in, that comes in terms of cuts. People aren't going to buy your beer. You're going to have you're gonna have less beer on the shelf. I mean, that's a good thing because it gives some sort of perspective. Of like, hey, hey, you're not selling the beer or you are selling the beer. It doesn't matter. You need to sit back and just go dark for a little bit and have Americans forget because Americans do forget. You go rogue for a little bit. I'm talking like a year, maybe even longer. And you sit there and then you come back with an ad with new leadership, with new people, you made a drastic change. You got rid of the people that sit there and pushed and peddled this whole thing. And then maybe, maybe you can gain the trust back from your customers. But boy, oh boy, did you, you put a dagger through yourself. And that, that one, that one lady that did it, we all saw her on the airwaves. That one lady that did it really did a doozy here on the company. And Bob Iger, I, I fully believe saw this a little bit with Disney, which is why they're firing a lot of executives in terms of the media and other avenues of people at the top, because you're having these people push an agenda and it's crippling. Americans will deal with stuff up to a certain point. But like I said, the second you start dealing with uh, uh, certain agendas or you're, you're pushing something a little bit too much, uh, just America just had enough of it. We've had enough of it. And uh, Kevin Leary's right. This is going to be the one in the textbooks for business school, business law, business marketing, whatever it is. Uh, this is going to be an example of if you're a corporation, just stay out of it. Just stay out of politics. People want your product and just just have your product speak for itself. Have your service speak for itself. Now, in terms of what we do here in the Bald Brad Show, I have a brand, right? I a patriotic brand. I'm here pro-America. I'm a conservative Republican. Doesn't mean I don't like Democrats. We hound them a lot, but that's because they do very knucklehead things nowadays. It doesn't mean that Democrats have always done bad things, you guys. Democrats have done good things. They're limited and far few between. But but would I love them to watch the show? Yeah, because I want them to come over to the other side. But am I alienating half the country? Absolutely. I'm absolutely alienating, but that's not my base. It's not who I'm trying to reach. If I could, that'd be great, but it's tough to try to reach those people because I'm very firm in what I believe. I'm very firm in pro-America values, the Constitution, the United States of America, uh, you know, this country, there's real evil out there, all those other things. Uh, that's for a whole nother video, but I want to know what you think. Can Bud Light recover from this? And if so, how long is it going to take? Really guys, write in the comment section. It does support the show. We would love to hear from you. I'm not just saying that. I really do swipe through, read all your comments. I'm trying to like every single one of them, reply to some of them, but really can Bud Light recover from this? Do you think? And, and if they do, what do they have to do to actually recover? Cause it'd be interesting to hear everybody's perspective on this. Maybe you have friends or family members that are in branding or at, at Bud Light. Like what do they need to do to sit there and get you back to buy their beer? I ain't ever buying, but I stopped drinking Bud Light in college. Like I said, I drink one beer predominantly that's stone. If I can't get stone, I'll get a flat tire or Newcastle. That's very rare. Predominantly it is stone IPAs all the way. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the bald Brad show. If you did make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.